under the pressure. Good afternoon and welcome to Friday Afternoon's Great Westminster live stream. Hey! Yay. <laughs> it's going to become a thing. We need a fake applause. Yes. Um, howdy. Hope you're all well. Thank you for everyone who has um, already commented. The comments are coming in thick and fast. There was some talk of the... Um, for those of you that didn't see it, we did our first podcast on Monday. All right, then you can report. Anyways, that was exciting. And we also put it on YouTube for those that don't listen to podcasts on Spotify and iTunes and all those yes. good places. Um, and uh, I said, what did I say? I want a firmware update with the CF Express compatibility. Exactly. And then I just went on a call with Nick and I said, come on, guys, just do it. <laughs> and then, ta-da, it came out. So we actually have the firmware update for CF Express. That's not the topic of today's talk, in fact, but we will... Um, do the firmware update yes and talk about it we're gonna well, live stream the film no we're not update of d850 no we're not but we are going to talk about it on the podcast next week yeah come see us on tuesday yeah no and you'll hear all Why? about it <laughs> come on the podcast on the podcast oh yes because yes. that's when it comes don't come on. here tuesday uh, give or take all right <laughs> anyway um what else have i got to say it's three Nothing. streams till christmas people so next week, expect Christmas jumpers. They will oh, be yes. coming to a stream near you. Um, and we have a, a rather interesting giveaway today. Yes, it's a piece of glass. <laughs> you make it sound so exciting. A piece of Nikon glass. Can you see this? Hang on. Can you see this? Yes. OK, so in here, oh, when you open it, you got a lens cloth. You've got a lens cloth. And then, sorry, I have to see what you can see. And then you can't get it out. So then you have to do this <laughs> very elegantly. I just got it out and now I can't get it out. One moment, please. There we go. That never happened before. This, no, it literally never happened and it happened for the first time because I probably put it in upside down. Right, okay. The anticipation of killing you. This is a piece of Nikon extra low dispersion glass, believe it or not. Now, extra low dispersion glass, if you don't know, takes six months to cool once they've put it together. So you get a solid block of it. Now, this is actually a paperweight. It could optionally be used as a weapon. Or a I, doorstopper. Or a doorstop. It's very heavy. I will clean my fingerprints off it before we send it to you now that I've touched it all over. No, I think it should come with Becky's fingerprints <laughs> on it. <laughs> so someone can produce a clone of me. Yeah. Please do. Um, so if you would like to win that, just drop us a comment that you would like to win this beautiful um, piece of Nikon glass. And we will... What is that what we're saying? I'd like to win because... I'd like to win. That'll do. Keep it simple. No, what um, about I'm watching the live stream. I'm because... watching the live stream because I loved some of your comments last week. Yeah. So if you want to do that, then we'll also count those because um, that was that was great to hear why you like the live stream. Um, yes, all I heard was I like to see Becky. I like to see Becky because it's all about <laughs> me, right? It's all right. I cried that <laughs> evening, but that's fine. <laughs> Anyway, so that's the competition for today. We will draw it at the end of the stream. Today, we are talking about... Oh, someone's... Sorry. Someone's asking what a Christmas jumper is. Oh, it is a UK mm. term. So um, in America, you call it a Christmas sweater. But they call it pullover. Or a pullover, maybe. One called hoodie. Or a, no, not a hoodie. No, not a hoodie. It's a, it's a grotesque Christmas-themed um, knitwear that you wear around Christmas time, which has in the UK really yeah. taken off over the last few years just because we like to be very silly. Yeah. I mean, I like to show my taste in fashion <laughs> right. with those jumpers How personally. to show your absolute, at the, at the time, your taste of Christmas fashion. So we will be doing that. Um, I'm very glad that I've clarified that for yeah. you. And I now... think this is the time of the year where I can actually come out and be myself. <laughs> you can actually you just know. show your true colours. Absolutely. Completely. So many people would like to win that. So there we go. <laughs> time to get busy. <laughs> Today we are talking about the smaller DSLR cameras, the entry level um, to sort of mid-range, lower end little Ds. Little Ds. As we call them. Yeah. Um, that, that actually started with a not so little D, which was the D70. D70? Yeah. A six megapixel camera. Amazing. Now, my wedding pictures were taken on a D70, so I thought, like, that was a great camera at the time. And it was six megapixels, wasn't wasn't too shabby. Came out around the same time as the D2X, so in 2004, which means what, Con? If it came out in 2004... <laughs> sorry. I wasn't born in 2004, if that's what you mean. I um... rehearsed <laughs> this bit. Um, it was the first prosumer or pro no consumer level DSLR yes and it came out five years 
Oh, yes. After the first DX That's camera. Right. That's, That's what right. I was going so for. It took five years for them to go from the top and the expensive technology and advance it where they could actually sell it under thousand pounds. Yeah. So Took them that that's long. what we kind of rehearsed to say, and then I forgot. <laughs> that's so. okay. That's fine. Most of this is not rehearsed in the I'm slightest. Doing well. Very yeah. well. I would like to just uh, interrupt this transmission to thank David, Ian, and someone a very early starter was way back here. Roy, thank you very much for your contributions thank to the Christmas much. Coffee Fund, which is over there. <laughs> um, so the D70 was an interesting one because it was yes. six megapixels, but obviously I think that Nikon but it had a tiny little screen on the back. Tiny. Yes. And then a year later... D70S came out. D70S. And with it the was... bigger screen. Yeah. And a part of that, it also had ENEL 3A battery instead of standard 3. Oh, wow. <laughs> which after they replaced with E. So they, they didn't do the B, the C and the D. Just and they went straight to the went E. Went straight to E. And I actually don't know the difference between the A and the E because I don't have one to look at, but I... It's a slightly it? higher capacity, yeah. according to Wikipedia. Oh, okay. Thanks, Wikipedia. That's very <laughs> helpful. So the D70S, as far as I thought, it also took higher capacity CF cards, because I yes. remember the D70 was like 4 gig was the max. Yes. And then um, D70S, I, I know, could yeah, take possibly 8. Up to 8 gigabytes. Now, yeah. weirdly, the D50 came out yes. at the same time. Now, the yes. D50 was the first little, little... Uh, entry level. Yes, that was the first foray into consumer DSLRs. Yeah. And I think it was about $799 when it came out, so $899 to be precise. What? Yes. That's very expensive. It's still expensive, <laughs> yeah. still not there yet. Um, the good thing about it that mm -hmm. they actually, while well, they made it smaller, they didn't reduce a lot of functionality. Yeah. So that was pretty good, and it was a good camera to start with, but kind of their main camera that defined the entry level yeah. came out after that, and it was called D40. D right, okay, so they went, it was a very confusing numbering system, even back then. <laughs> That's fine, last stream did really well. Yeah, we yeah. did, so it really, really doesn't make any sense to someone watching for the first time, but the, the D50 also took SD cards. Yes, first first camera, well, in, in that kind of level, on the consumer level, that would take SD card. Maximum capacity is one gig. One gig, remember that? <laughs> I think I've actually got a one gig card just specifically to test D50s, um, in case anyone brings one in. Um, or I might have actually had to give that away with the last D50 we sold, because we didn't have a one gig card anymore. Yeah, one gig cards are like a gold dust right Yeah, now. they are. So um, if you still have a D50 lurking around, the other benefit of the D50, which they yes. didn't put into the later cameras, was the fact that it would use the non-AFS lenses. Okay, so, so it still had a built-in motor in the body. Yes, it was a little bit bigger yeah. than our current entry-level bodies. That's true. I see that you're using one to um, prop up your iPad, so I will yes. take this one. So, it's a nice iPad stand, though. Yes, so, yeah, very true. good. So the, um, the D40, which we don't have one in the shop, um, so I can't really show it to you, but it was that same form factor as the D3000 yes. series. So that was the first really tiny little camera. Um, and that's quite right, Roy. The D40 wouldn't support the AFD lenses, whereas the D50 and the D70s did. Yeah. I'm going to try and make this not a complete uh, mess. Okay. <laughs> so try and explain yeah, these things. we're getting too technical, Very um, technical. AF and AFD lenses would focus manually yeah. on that camera. And then AFS type, so that's the lens that has a built-in autofocus motor inside itself. Yes. It, will, it would autofocus. So D40, when it came out, obviously it, it was the entry level. So it was $499, so $500. Okay, so yeah, yeah. that was about the right price point for yeah. people just getting started. Yeah, and it wasn't just for the body, it was with the lens as well. Yeah. So 6 megapixel sensor is D card, so that was all good, yet it didn't work with older lenses, which was a problem. No. But at the same time, the funny things about it is that D40, if we kind of speed up a little bit, I'm going to say they released D40X and D60 after. Mm. D40, because of smaller resolution, was actually better um, in low light than the uh, other two cameras. How funny. But the other interesting thing that I've read uh, was it had a 500 of a second sync speed on the flash. Which the D70 also had. Yes, but none of the other cameras that came out after would have that. They went back to either 200 of a second or 250 of a second. How weird. 
very strange. And because the mirror was a combination of kind of mechanical and electronic shutter, mm. um, you could potentially push the sync speeds a lot faster, almost um, um, up to 4,000th of a second. Wow. That was an interesting little camera. Yeah, not something that you'd expect from entry-level model, is no, it? No, not at all. I think also in at that point, and certainly up until a few years ago, Nikon was sometimes including features that you wouldn't expect in smaller bodies. That's true. And then, uh, we'll talk about this later, I'll have all the gears to grind later yes. <laughs> about the things that they stripped out of the later models of the entry level cameras. And then you suddenly go, oh, this camera doesn't have yeah. a, re you know, a remote release. I stuff. think we should have like the whole podcast series on the what grinds my gears. <laughs> what grinds my gears. Yes. Um, I would like to say Norm and Peter both said that they were using D70s, great little cameras. Um, Norm pointed out the 500th of a second uh, Flash sync speed, ideal for outdoor macro Absolutely. fill flash, which yeah, is great. The fill and flash as well, or if you want to use, let's say, uh, you want to shoot wide open, yeah, 1.8 or something like that. So. Yeah, exactly. There's a few. Ed also had a D70. I think that was quite an iconic little camera. And a few times I've mentioned we get people who still buy them yeah. super cheap um, because they want to convert them into infrared. Or um, I did have a lady who had a huge underwater outfit. She mm -hmm. had three underwater housings that all took D70s. Mm -hmm. And once you spent like three grand on an At underwater point, housing. You would just rebuy the camera. Just buy the buy a camera for like, you know, a hundred quid and then put it in the housing That's if it was true. fail. So um, they were kind of iconic, I think, yeah. at the time. And keep in mind that those cameras were expensive at the time mm. because technology was still developing. And to get them to the point under thousand pounds or let's say under five hundred dollars or pounds, that, that was quite a technological tune. Yeah, yeah, it was because cameras for consumers didn't really become a thing until exactly. until that point. Um, certainly you didn't see everyone on the street with a camera. It was quite a no. special thing to be able to take a camera, a proper camera out with you. Now we've got them on our phones. <laughs> we just take everything for so granted. No one uses cameras again. I feel you know. so old. <laughs> um, so now uh, Norm said he also had a D80 and a D90 and replaced them with a D200, but kept the D70 because it produced great images straight mm -hmm. out of the camera. Um, lots of D70 fans here. Yeah, again, we're coming back to the color reproduction. Yeah. Because each camera would produce colors slightly differently. We had fans of particular models, let's say specific models. Yeah, exactly. And um, and even now you get that kind of, like we do with our D200s, yeah. we were like, oh, good old days. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what the funny thing was that the screens at the back as well, they would have slightly different color cast. Yes. So I remember like D D700 had like a purple color cast. And then Very we did, yeah. cozy looking. That's the thing. And then people complain when D800 came out, it's like, oh, it's got green color cast. The yeah. colors all crawled, and it was just the screen at the back, actually, not yeah. the image that what you would see on the screen. Yeah, the exactly. Screen. Um, like those warm, fluffy, rose tinted yes. glasses sort of back That's screens. True. So the D40, when it jumped to the D40X, yes. We're, so we're talking one year. Yeah. So oh, so it was a very quick upgrade. D40 came out at the same time as the D80, 2006. Yes. But the D80 was 10 megapixels. Yes. That also took SD cards. Correct. And then the D40 was like its little brother. Exactly. And they had that range. It's kind of... Spot on. Yeah, thank you. Well done. <laughs> and then the D40X had 10 megapixels as well. That's right. So, so it was it from D80, do you think it came I from I think D80? it came yeah. from the D80, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the D40X was another weird one. This was when Nikon were rapidly producing entry-level cameras yeah. because it went D40, D40X, and then D60 mm -hmm. in very quick succession yes and we kind of with this type of models so we go on the yearly releases instead of let's say let's say two or three year gaps between yeah which the they stopped models. so much now we yeah. don't, they don't do that so much um so the d40x was a 10 megapixel i remember um it was actually when i first started working here the d40x i think had just kind of been phased out by the d60 mm -hmm. um and we were still trying to understand why the D60, because they were the same resolution. Yeah, a lot of people say, well, it's kind of was rebudged D40X, right. wasn't it? Yeah. Right, so there wasn't actually a huge... Do you know if there was a massive difference between No, it was them? basically the same camera. It's okay, yeah. with a new name. <laughs> I saw them slapping D60 logo on top of D40X it's myself. It reminds no. me of the 600 610 scenario where it was like... Yes. It's the same thing, basically. I think because uh, we 
started to live in a world where every year the new iPhone comes out. So yeah. this yearly releases of consumer electronics became a thing. Yeah. And sometimes the technology just can't advance as fast as, let's say, you know, the, the, the releases. So a lot of those cameras, they would, would share pretty much kind of 95% of the same DNA. Yeah. And they would have just slight improvements in, you know, I wonder, say, usability. I was just thinking, did they put a new processor in it? But no, it had the same X-Speed processor in the 40X and the 60 as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know the difference, actually, apart from the name. I don't know if there were any technical differences, I, apart from the fact that the D60 took up to 16 meg. Yeah, uh, so that's probably what was the difference. Cards, yeah. And then the D40X only took 8 gig cards, yeah, so, or, or thereabouts. It was one, it was, I know that one was yeah. higher capacity than the other. Generally, with other things, they put kind of uh, yeah, bigger card slots, yeah. and they probably improve the writing speeds from the buffer into the memory card. So generally, yeah, those kind of as I call quality of life upgrades. Quality of life yes. upgrades. And then, then, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm trying not to jump around too now much. Now it gets confusing. It gets so confusing. Yes. Because we had D70, D70 SD80. Thank you. You stole that. Yes, I do this sometimes. <laughs> um, D80, D90. So D90 and D60, this is for Tini's camera, the D90. Yeah, also my mum had a D90 for a, for a long time that she loved to pieces. The D90 came out at the same time as the D60. It was 12 megapixels, was it, Nick? Yes, it D90 was. The D90 was 12 megapixels, I wrote it yes. down. <laughs> I remember because it was like a D300 mini version sort of thing. It had mm -hmm. the same sensor, but it was the first Nikon DSLR with video in it. And look at us now yeah. streaming on the web. <laughs> streaming, and we can shoot 4K if we want to, and all those fancy things. Um, <laughs> So fancy. Uh, thank you, Peter, for your contribution to thank the Coffee you. Fund. Very much appreciated. Uh, yeah, so the D90 was the first DSLR with video. It was manual focus video. Yeah. And I discovered a few random things about it, just in case someone's still a D90 owner out there. The video does not work with certain memory cards. You have to use approved memory cards to get the video to function. Is I've that actually because thought, of the amount of data that was written onto memory cards? I would, imagine, too slow? I would imagine so. I'd, I've still found people even now who bring us cameras mm -hmm. like V3100 or the 5200, which if you put like a third, I say third party, like a, a Kingston or mm -hmm. a PNY or some off-brand memory card Yeah, in and there. D90 uh, took SD cards, so yeah. if you would try to put CF cards, it would just wouldn't record video on it. <laughs> But you wouldn't be able to put them in the well, hole. Here we go, so no video. That's, no, but know. if you put some off-brand memory card in there, then the video function wouldn't work, but it would still take um, pictures, which was kind of random. Anyway, there's a tip for you if you're a D90 user and you're struggling to get the video to work. Yeah, there was a time where you could buy a SanDisk card of China and it wouldn't work. Yeah, this is know. true. Actually, there were also fake memory cards out there, which yep. was very weird. Um, Richard uh, started his Nikon journey with a D90. Uh, Norm would like to know what we're using. We're using a Z6 for our live streams. In fact, pretty much all our videos are shot on the Z6 now. The very, very early videos that you see of me at my desk that are out of focus were shot with the D750, I think. And No, no, they were shot with Canon. That's why we threw them away <laughs> and, you know, switched to Might have even yeah. been shot with some, I don't know what they were shot with, but they were shot with DSLRs and face recognition tracking and stuff wasn't really a thing. Yeah. <laughs> If it was a thing, it didn't work yeah. as well. Well, actually, nowadays we shoot everything on 35 millimeter film, <laughs> cine vision, because <laughs> we can. Yeah. Anyway, so um, so that's what we're using as a Z6. Z6. My second Nikon digital D90, which I still have and use to do fun shooting. That's David, um, who had sorry, <laughs> David, who I've been in contact with on email. Thank you for all your emails, David. Um, and William had a D80 alongside the F3HP. It's interesting who combined what with what film camera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's like Ed was saying he had his F80 and a D70. Mm -hmm. And then you've got D80 alongside F3HP. Uh, it's interesting that these were the kind of entry point for a lot of people to go from film. It's like food pairing, isn't it? Like yeah. <laughs> you have this cheese with this grapes. And, you know, or and with this yeah, wine. With wine, yeah. So <laughs> interesting. Yeah, mm. exactly. And I think that because these cameras weren't so expensive, they were, they were kind of accessible to people who were maybe still inclined to shoot film, but wanted to try yeah. out digital. Yeah, I don't know, for some reason, D90, that kind of uh, time of the cameras, I think that's where the cameras got really good. Yeah. Because previous generations, they were still developing and you could see a huge improvement. 
and from the 90 and kind of onwards yeah. we started to reach where the quality became so good yeah exactly because we had yeah. d90 we had the d700 came out yes. around the same time um shortly after we had the d3x yeah. it really started to yeah. improve incrementally like, and in this case if before you could upgrade effectively every year because you would ha you would see a huge leap in technology yeah. from that point onwards we kind of we would say well skip one generation and wait for another one so you'll see a bigger leap yeah yeah exactly um now john says his d90 is now an infrared camera another great camera to do that i have a infrared d90 that is on um long-term loan from michael sharp hello to michael if you're watching um Shegre asks uh says i'm a beginner photographer what should i do well this is a good stream for you because we are talking about entry-level cameras so um we'll move on to the more modern ones which i think are more relevant now but if you can pick up an inexpensive second hand even a d90 yes. these days is, is yes. re relatively inexpensive it will work with almost all of Nikon's lenses. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, right back to AI and AIS, so manual focus lenses. Um, and it's kind of the sweet spot of a of a sensor in that it's 12 megapixels, so it makes everything look great. <laughs> no skill needed. Um, <laughs> and it also allows you to kind of start moving over from automatic to manual because it has both options. And that's one thing that I do like about these little bodies. Yeah, I think the beauty of these cameras, and let's say from D90, but even let's say coming back to D40 and D60, yes, you have all those point and shoot modes, yeah. but you could also have full manual mode where you control aperture and shot speed yourself. Yes. Or you could use aperture priority or shot speed priority, which is what we call half automated modes. Yeah. And that's the beauty of thing. You could buy a camera without knowing anything about photography and then well, if you're interested in that, well, switch to full manual and shoot it with a studio light. Exactly. And like this. Get yeah. your camera off auto. I've seen quite a lot of those YouTube videos where it's like, you know, the five things you need to know or the three things you need to know to take your camera off auto. Um, and you can just start with pointing and shooting to get yeah. used to it. So that's what I would say. Um, so now we had D90. Mm -hmm. D90 was the sort of serious amateur. Yes. D60. Yes. And then... We Ooh. we went for, so we went to D C sixty to D five thousand. Yes, this is the interesting one because they released two models in the entry level range. So yes. they released D five thousand mm -hmm. and they have D three thousand model. Yes. So D sixty, in my opinion, became more of a D three thousand model. Uh, kind of because feature way. set was pretty much the same as well as the size yeah. and then 5000 model it was completely new in line it it was the size of g3000 but had a tilted screen at the back it was a uh, just popped down the pop Do you down remember it was thing. like it popped down that way it didn't yeah. come out that way it's before the time where selfies were popular yeah. they would look the other way <laughs> so, so you didn't do yeah. selfies with it but you could hold it up above a crowd yeah. for example um and but... that kind of got the got the features from d90 yes it did it was like a mini Absolutely. Even more mini D90. So suddenly we had a kind of, it wasn't a true D90 replacement at the time, but it kind of sat between the D90 and D3000 or D60 series. Yeah, because the D60 was 10 megapixels, D3000 was also 10 megapixels. Hmm. Um, and yeah, you're quite right, Roy. The D70, D90 aren't exactly entry level cameras, but at the time there wasn't anything else That's as true. an entry point. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So you have. The D40s and the the D40 came out after the D70, so that was an entry point. But mm -hmm. before that, D70 was it. And if you are looking for a bargain that you can still potentially get serviced or repaired, you're slightly better off going for a more advanced early model. That's true. Than a very basic one because they tend to get supported a little bit longer. Exactly. Yeah. And the D90, for example, you can still buy batteries and battery chargers for it. You can't for the D40 easily get yeah. hold of the e and 9s yeah. these the days. The body caps are still available. Body caps. Yeah. yeah, that's all you can get for those. So hence the recommendation of a D90. Um, so D5000 had video also a manual focus like the D90. Yes. So it was the same kind of thing. We had a stonking, yeah. what, 720p or something like that? Ooh. <laughs> so Big at the time. high resolution. Um, the D3000 didn't have video, didn't have a flippy outy screen. It was basically a D60 yes. with a few upgrades. Um, and at that point, the video was kind of a premium feature. Still yes. a premium feature that would include, they would they would include in the more expensive cameras. Yeah, exactly. It was, it's more recent years. And I've even had people come and say, why don't they make a camera that doesn't have video on it? Because I don't want video. But yeah, it's these all part days, of the package nowadays. You can't you can't avoid yeah. it. Whereas in those days you you couldn't necessarily yeah. get it easily. Well they had you can DF and that was the only one. Panned out. <laughs> That's the only one that didn't <laughs> yes. have video on it in the last sort of ten years, That's I would true. say. That's so true. then 
we jumped. So we had D5000, D3000, D3, and the D90 was still the middle. Still around, yes. Until the D7000. Okay. So, first of all, obviously, they've clearly ran out of numbers. <laughs> obviously. So, Couldn't say D100, could no, they? Because no. that already existed. Exactly. <laughs> so they were like, let's whack a few zeros, <laughs> few thousands on there, um, and then sort of try and streamline the numbering of that that level so we had yeah the 7000 series Imagine. <laughs> 5000 series and 3000 series that's how they go in terms of can you imagine nick and marketing department meeting <laughs> they're really struggling the to... heads were exploding I think. what yeah. number are we gonna call this shall um, we call it rebel no that one was taken no yeah. <laughs> i can't do that yeah. um so the d7000 was the first 16 megapixel dx sensor that we saw and I think that was kind of a true D90 replacement. Yeah. But I also think that it's actually a little bit more advanced than D90. Yeah, quite quite considerably because it yeah. had better video. It had yeah. autofocus in its video. It had two card slots, yeah. two SD card slots. Um, I yeah. would call it semi-professional in a way. So it was a serious, serious hobbyist in yeah, this camera. It was, and you could. I did. I did see professionals using them as because also not every pro used a full frame camera at that point. There were still and I think even now there's still pros using sort of flagship DX bodies mm -hmm. and then they would have the D7000 as a second camera, yeah, for example. Back up, amazing. Smaller and lighter. Or the camera that you can use, let's say, for studio setup and just run them to death. So shoot 200, 300,000 shots and then just buy another one because they were so cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I was just having a look. Tom says his first DSLR was a D3100. Nice entry level camera. Yeah, so we're going to come to that in just a moment, actually. Yeah. So we had D7000, 16 megapixels. I'm trying to make it clear because, yes. you know, it's. So that's a new sensor. New sensor. That's a completely new sensor. And then we had D3100, yeah. which also had a new sensor because yes. they went from 10 megapixels on 3000 uh, camera to 14 megapixels on 3100. Which is odd because you think that because there's nothing else that has 14 megapixels. That's true. And they could have gone for the 12 megapixel yeah. sensor from the 5100, mm -hmm. but then maybe that wouldn't. Oh, sorry, 5000. 5, I wonder if they got the deal on the sensor or something. Maybe. You know. I don't know who made that sensor. I think it was Sony. But they did use other manufacturers to produce sensors for, for later cameras. Which yes, who, who, uh, which model used Toshiba sensor? Uh, 5100 5, and the D7100 were Toshiba sensors. Mm. So, um, I mean, I'll be honest, I never liked the colors that came out of the 7100. Mm -hmm. But also, I believe it didn't have the low pass filter on mm. the sensor, which added so it was a, it was an odd camera. It's an interesting one. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit yeah. weird. I'm not ready to talk about that yet, though. We have to talk about the 3100. No, a little 3100. Bit more. Yeah. Uh, so my brother had D3100. My uh, my oldest has a D3100. That's his his mummy. I want to learn photography. Take this. Here you go. Learn have on it. that. Yeah, it's going so well. No, great camera. <laughs> um, got new processor there, XP2, which was great at the time. Yeah. So um, it's got video recording. It's uh, the first the three thousand series cameras that had the video recording. Right. There. Yeah. So um, to be honest with you, I think it was great. Um, as a kind of a little tiny camera uh, with a really good image sensor. It I think really it was, fantastic. was. It was a great little camera. And then um, shortly after, yeah, they brought out the fifty one hundred. That's true. And then we had. Almost kind of like an alignment of models, almost. Mm -hmm. 3100, yeah. 5100, D7000. That's true. Yeah. And price-wise, we're talking, it was something about 350, the kit with the lens for 3000 series, series cameras, and yeah. it was 5 to 550 with a D5100 mm -hmm. um, and 18 to 55 VR lens. Uh, kit. Exactly. So, so you yeah. had kind of two price points. If you wanted to spend a little bit more, then you yeah. could get a, a five thousand for five thousand mm -hmm. series. A fifty one hundred. It had an articulated screen yes, instead so of the drop the down. Screen, okay. So, uh, so you could finally do selfies. Don't have a fifty one hundred here, which no, is really don't. or a five thousand series. In fact, our fifty six hundred has vanished. I think we may have had to sell it yeah, because too someone popular. someone needed it on an emergency basis. So we might have had to sell our demo. But it had that fully articulated swivel screen, which yeah, was great. Yeah, I mean, people watching live stream and then they say, "Well, I need this camera right now." Call <laughs> us and they just buy it. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Adrian, thank you very much for your contribution to the Coffee Fund. Very much appreciated. Uh, yes, Brian, you're quite right. The D7000 would take the screw drive lenses. So that was one of the primary differences between that kind of upper 
level of DX cameras mm -hmm. versus the lower two, mm -hmm. the D7000 series, just like the D7080 and 90, would all take the AF lenses. So those are the ones that didn't have the motor in them. They were what a lot of people called screw drive because they literally stuck a little screw at the back of the lens to drive the focus. Um, Pity the FTZ doesn't take, yes, it is a pity that the FTZ doesn't take AFD lenses. Yeah, with shall we focus. announce the, that we are waiting <laughs> we for We are it. waiting for it, and then you're going to call your person at Nikon. Exactly. So on Monday, <laughs> there's going to be new FTZ Mark II announcement <laughs> with AFD lens support. I heard it here first. Um, but anyway, the D7000 was a great camera. The 5100, can I tell you a funny fact? Yes, fun fact. Fun fact. When I was not yet quite ready to go full frame, yeah. but I was a little bit tired of the D300. Okay. I had a D5100 oh. for a little while. I had it for about, not quite a year, maybe yeah. about nine months. Was it your guilty pleasure? It, it was, because it was small and light and it took all my lenses. I was very happy. I could even use manual focus lenses. Um, you don't get that fancy non-CPU lens data. If you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah. Con has a video about yeah. that. And um, you didn't have to pretend that you know what you're doing, isn't it? And I so didn't have it. No. You know. <laughs> No, but the beauty of it is, if you know how to shoot manual, if you understand shutter speeds and apertures and ISO, and you know how to read a meter, then one of those little cameras works just as well as anything else. That's you true. don't have to buy a big fancy schmancy camera to take good photos. In fact, um, I remember this, there was a beautiful double page spread in one of Nikon's pro magazines. Mm -hmm. And uh, the chap that had taken it was in the shop and he said, you know what camera I took that on? And it was this super high resolution, amazing flowers and it's taken with a D40. Wow. So and I didn't know, it was amazing. That's a jaw so dropping. You don't need, uh, as we say all the time, you don't yeah. need the latest and the greatest to take good photos. It has a lot to do with the photographer as well. So the 5100 for me was like, oh, I've got a small light camera. Mm -hmm. I kind of missed having a small light camera actually, because I could take it to the park without, mm -hmm. you know, the camera kit bag and the tripod. It's almost like Nikon listened and released mirrorless system. <laughs> almost like that happened. Uh, I didn't call this time. Yeah. No. No, you didn't. They kind of figured it they, out. They figured yeah. it out for themselves. Yeah. Um, you're right, Norm. The lower end bodies did not have battery grips. You could actually buy third party ones. Not that I recommend that, but I, I had seen some. Um, but the D7000 series had the battery grip mm -hmm. capability. They also were single card slot cameras. So all of these little bodies have a little card slot. They also take a little battery. Um, which I must say, 14 or nine this one's a 14. Time? That's a 14. The yeah. nines went right up until I think the D3000. That's true. Or the That's D60 true. at least. Um, but the D80 and the D90 did also take grips. It was called the yeah. MBD80. Um, they kind of stopped doing them after that. Yeah, well, see, the D7500 doesn't take a grip. Mm -hmm. And that I still don't understand. That's true. That's true. Um, but the beauty of 80 and 90 is they would take a proper big battery from D300 and D200 cameras. Yes. So they, they would. would last quite They'd a while. They'd last forever. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that was one, I would say, downside, particularly now with more and more people using the flip out screen and the live view functionality. Mm -hmm. Those little batteries don't last as long. The world we live in. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but actually, what, what? Like, what I want to say, I mean, it's it's so easy to sniff on those cameras because they're small, cheap and inexpensive and they're not professional. But... <laughs> guilty. But, uh, someone guilty of yeah. doing that. But... <laughs> Here's a good thing. They are the best selling Nikon cameras. Yeah, quite factually, they are their yeah. most popular yeah. model. D850 doesn't sell as much as D3000 series sells. So yeah. we all really should be grateful yeah. because they all fund R&D. That's right. So research and development of the more professional models. That's right. It's very true. We can't sniff at these, which is why we are educating you about them today. Absolutely. A lot of you already know much of this stuff, but hopefully you're picking up something along the way. Um, so the... So we had the D7000, yes. 5100, yes. 3100, and then... What happened? 5200, 3200 came out at the same time. Oh, ah. is that so? Yeah, so the, there was like this weird staggering of releases, and then we had, in the same year, those two bodies came out, um, and that's when we finally got the 24 megapixel sensor, which we pretty much see in every camera. It's pretty much stayed with us till now. Yeah. Um, even, well, D7200 now has been discontinued, but that had 24 megapixel sensor. Yeah, exactly. So right through, we had 24 megapixels. Um, the 5200 again had yeah. the flip out screen. 
that he... all the good things that we kind of got used to expect from this series so yeah. it was slightly more advanced than 3000 series yeah so a little bit faster uh, a little bit um well auto focus was a little bit faster image quality was tiny bit faster as well uh you would have a you know the tilted screen so kind of if you felt that 3000 was too limiting yeah then you would get this and also the video on this type of camera would be better as well yeah i mean apart from that what would be your okay so was there an image quality difference because the sensors were the same i heard varying things to be honest with you, they, they, I, they were quite similar so yeah. it's really you would really have to nitpick to see the difference between the two cameras i wondered if the you know there's a sort of almost lag time when you take a picture yes. and the 3000 series i found was always even now just it's got a fraction yes. of a second slower yes than the 5000 series. I wondered if maybe they'd improved the, the shutter mechanism or something. Yeah, it could be to something to do with the processor as well. Yes, that's true. Um, so if you wanted something a little bit more, then you'd go 5200. Otherwise, if you wanted to start right out the entry, it was the 3200. Um, now we're going to talk about the 3300 in a moment. So, but not yet, because then came the Toshiba censored D7100 in mm. 2013. Toshiba. Yes. Now, we had a lovely colleague here who you may, some of you may remember, Pablo. He had a D7100 for a long time. He raved about that camera. Yes. Um, was it his first uh, Nikon? No, no. He had D70s, D90s going mm -hmm. through before he was even working here. But it was the first camera that I think he got when he was working here with us. Mm. And um, he would show his pictures and blow them up and everything. Pablo, if you're watching, hello, we miss you. Um, <laughs> so that really kind of opened my eyes up to that level of camera actually was because he was using it professionally he was using yeah. it for events and he was doing a lot of work with the migrant center down the road that's true yeah. um, and doing their event photography and, and articles for them and stuff like that and he was using that as his kind of photojournalist camera and i suddenly thought hey these, these are still quite good those cameras can actually do that <laughs> these things? cameras are actually amazing um now, and then you would go back to your 750 and yeah. you would be absolutely fine. You would <laughs> no, this was 2013. It. So 2013, it was the D700 for me still. Okay. <laughs> but still, as a DX camera, the 7100 was a massive improvement over the D7000. And if you look at that line of cameras, mm -hmm. you got 16 megapixels, D7000. It had a few issues, the 7000. Mm -hmm. I will say, I have discovered many, many times that it needed recalibrating or there was True. a bit, it needed fine tuning. 7100 kind of got rid of all that. So I didn't see any, any issues with those. Mm -hmm. um, and then our sort of accompaniment to that was the D5300. 5300. And that's an interesting one because it's the first Nikon camera, first Nikon DSLR mm -hmm. that would have a built-in GPS sensor. First and almost only until the D6. Until the D6. <laughs> so if you want GPS now, yes. you have to spend six and a half grand. But if you wanted yes. uh, GPS back in uh, 2013, then you'd spend six or 700 quid, I yeah, think. It absolutely. Was and yeah, of course, they, they would make a GP1 unit that you could buy for your professional camera, but to have it built in. And again, on a entry oh, consumer type right. camera because again we were talking about that they were including some features that they wouldn't include in professional cameras that's right but you would see them in an entry level so it was one of those cameras that actually um was sold when even d5500 came out and a lot of people would buy 5300 or 5500 just because for gps sensor that's right and it also had um the original version of the wi-fi capability the so original one the original the og <laughs> wireless mobile utility app if you remember that rolls right off the tongue that yes. was the predecessor to snapbridge um and i remember that was because the bigger bodies again yes. the bigger that. bodies didn't have that you had to buy a dongle you had yes. to buy a w u one a or b one b yeah um which was such a headache it was like why not include it in the camera you can include it in a 600 pound camera yeah. I, I remember <laughs> we were complaining why are you releasing t800 and there's no wi-fi built in yeah but there is yeah. on this little DX camera. It was very, very bizarre. Um, D5300 was a great little camera and it was only discontinued very recently. Yes. Very, very recently. They it were still discontinued running it. discontinued D5500 and 56 was out and 5300 was still available. Yeah. Imagine that. Exactly. So you could still get it. And I think that was just because of its GPS capabilities. Have to just have a little look at the comments quickly because yeah, I'm that. sorry I have not been giving you guys enough attention. So um, Taddy still has his D5100, works a treat. Um, Norm complains that the D80 and D90 weren't really entry levels. This is true, but basically none of the entry levels had the capability of the grip. That's that's what we were talking mm -hmm. about. Um, 
uh, yes. <laughs> that comment. D3... The answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. D3300 still has the most powerful pop-up flash of the D3000 series. Great for triggering optically other off-camera flashes, additionally slightly better build quality over the more recent 3000 series. Now... Now, now. Now, now. This is true. They changed the build quality when we got to the D3500, actually. the D Well, I don't know if this was a change between the 34 and the 33, but I thought those two were basically mm -hmm. the same. Um, the 3400, I would actually say, was the best. But now, hmm, this is a good question. Did the 3300 have uh, the creative lighting system compatibility? No. So you could, in theory, still, if you were just using what they call like SU4 mode, you could still use... You could use SU4, which would, you would need to get a trigger for. Yeah. Okay, fine. So fine. But not TLS, not creative light or lighting system. But you could optically trigger any off-camera flash with any built-in flash if you're just optically triggering. Yes, if it's a light. Yeah. yes. But you won't get any um, compatibility in terms of that TTL compatibility. No, so okay. So, full um, manual. Yeah. So, um, ATR Bear, I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your handle correctly, but um, I'm very intrigued about your comment on that. I would be intrigued to know if there was, if there's more to that that I should know. Um, now, D5100 is a good camera, but autofocus is not good, MK Official says, yes. uh, which is fair enough. I've never found that the autofocus was phenomenal on those cameras. Yeah, it was never the best feature, was it? No, no, and obviously me being a manual focus user, quite often I would be manual focusing when I had the D5100, but definitely the bigger bodies with the ability to also use the older AF lenses yes. and fully autofocus, those generally were better also in autofocus. Um, now, do do do. I love the convenience of the battery pack on the D200. A lot of people are going for the battery pack solution. My battery pack users unite. <laughs> <laughs> um, marketing decision. If demand is good for entry level and mid range models, that's what the factories produce. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And as uh, Con was saying, the D3000, that kind of entry level range of cameras funds so much of Nikon's research into the bigger stuff. So Absolutely. That we can't keeps them going. Them. Um, Hello, Richard. <laughs> Richard is for, is here. He said hello, Becky. Uh, so Peter's using his D70 this week to photograph slides projected onto a white wall. So you can do that. Keep that coffee away from my computer. Um, so now I think, yes, lack of Wi-Fi and GPS has often irritated us. Now that we have SnapBridge, um, I'm not going to repeat what you said, Roy. Now that we have SnapBridge, uh, you can read it through the... <laughs> <laughs> not allowed to say that. Um, actually, see. no. Um, actually, you can get GPS capability with that because it talks to your phone and basically your phone sends the information, the location information to the file. So you can you can get that to work. Um, but yes, it eats up the battery life. It is very annoying. My batteries just drain while sitting in my camera bag because I've yes. got SnapBridge. I've got the Bluetooth on. I have airplane mode on at all times, and I only <laughs> turn it off when I need to transfer the images. Yeah, I should probably do that yeah. too, but I'm just too lazy. I just like to leave it on all the time. I want no. to have ready access to my pictures. Yeah, not a big fan of auto download as well. No, that under, you, put it, you don't want every picture on your no, phone. No, absolutely not. Fog it up. Um, but I do think that all of the upper Nikons should have had GPS built in. I really do think that should have been a feature. The D6 is quite interesting. This is not a D6 stream, obviously, but the positioning of the GPS unit is right at the top. So it makes yes. the top of the camera look a bit more yeah, like but bulbous. it's also, it's, it's, it, the cover is, I don't know whether it's plastic or not plastic, but it's not metal. No, and, it's some something else. And like the reason for that being is because the metal would shield the signal. So, right. so yeah, to get the strength of the signal, yeah, they had to make this area a lot more fragile for, so, compared to the rest of the camera. Which is very funny because most of the other pro bodies are all magnesium alloy. Yeah. So, yeah. I so this one is magnesium why. alloy, just a part of the GPS. That little polycarbonate. Yeah shield thingy yeah um thingy <laughs> technical term anyway so there you go the, that's why gps so we got as far as seven one hundred fifty three hundred yes and then we saw the thirty three hundred so let's talk about d6 <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just based out a little Finally, bit Finally, we took something serious. Um, D3300. Yes. Again, 24 megapixels. Yes. So there they kind of became same-ish in a way. But the main difference between the 33 and the 32... Is it the video? I, possibly. But actually, I was going to say was compatibility with AFP lenses. That's when we started to see our pulse motor lenses. Now, why are AFP lenses a thing? <laughs> yeah, I still why? ask myself this question. Why do they exist? Well, AFP 
actually drives the focus in small pulses, which means that for video, you don't get that sort of, first of all, you don't get the noise. And you don't get the jitter. And you yeah. don't get that jitter or that hunting. Mm. Um, so now that the entry level cameras were starting to be used more and more by, I would say, media content creators, like <laughs> media content creators. Like us. Uh, like us, exactly. The influencers. Um, the, by those people. Um, the vloggers, the bloggers. The, those, the, people. those people. Those people. Um, yeah. <laughs> by us, us folk that uh, decide to put stuff online, uh, it became quite important to have a camera and a lens combination that could work for video without creating unnecessary distractions, I would say, like the hunting motor mm. or um, the, the sound of the autofocus in video drives me absolutely That's an optimal. interesting theory, Becky. Mm. No, I know. It's not a theory. <laughs> it's not. I don't think it's a theory. That's I what I was told by Nikon. Thank you. Hat on. No, yeah. I, know, I know it is. But actually, yeah, it feels like Nikon listened to the creators. Yeah, exactly. This was this became the camera for if you're a media student, that's the camera you go for. That kind of thing. Or if the, you're the beanie type <laughs> mustache wearer. You don't have to put pigeonhole people. They no. can just they can be media students without wearing beanies. <laughs> that's true. So, um we were all we were media students once too. That's true. So um the three thousand three hundred worked with the um AFP lenses. The 5,500, they skipped a whole number from 53 to 50. Is that the four thing again? Yeah, they didn't like that. But they did it with the 30. But they had Nikon D40. It's like almost... doesn't make any sense. I don't quite know what happened to the D5400, but it didn't happen, basically. It just, it didn't occur. It's the same that would happen to D400. They <laughs> thought they released it, but they actually didn't. Yeah. And they said, okay, let's just, <laughs> just do like, another Scrap it, yeah. let's start again. So okay. we had the D5500. Now, the D5500 was the first one with touchscreen. Yes. Wow. The little touchy thing. Yeah, which was great. And obviously, it was a flip-out touchy screen. Um, it was also a slightly more sleeker design. Yes. It was that sort of narrow design that we see now. I liked it because it had a deeper grip. Mm. Well, it was still small, it yeah. was thinner, so the grip was the same size, but it was deeper. Yeah, exactly. So it was it's just nicer handling. Yeah. Um, and apart from that, still 24 megapixels. They didn't change much in that respect, but we got our XSpeed 4 processor in That's it, true. Which was also in the D3300. So um, that started to become you know these dx cameras were becoming very good in low light the main complaint of the entry levels was that the focusing was too slow and it wasn't a sort of super fast uh reaction time good grief thank you very much bill for your contribution to the coffee fund um thank you, bill. and you are very welcome for all the advice and the and the rubber eye cup that's a coffee and that's some mince pies for us today uh kids are gonna eat tonight yeah. <laughs> the mince pies in gales have been calling out to me actually just down the road um yes roy you're quite right all of the z lenses are very quiet which is one reason why they're so good for video they're completely silent which is why we're using a z 24 to 70 on a z6 for our videos now um we learned the hard way we really did we we started with dslrs and with even afs lenses weren't quiet enough for video so um so true z systems really made a difference to that um so we had 5500 yes we had the 3300 this is when numbers started getting confusing yes. again and then we had 7200 7200 which i think was possibly one of the best of the 7000 yeah. cameras interesting one because it was 24 megapixel sensor but it was a different sensor it wasn't a toshiba sensor no it was a sony sensor it was a sony sensor and it came out just after the d750 which meant that it was kind of it, that was the camera that kind of blurred the lines between That's FX true. and DX a That's bit. True. It was like so many people said, do I go for a D750 or a 7200? I've got a D300 or a D7000. It was so difficult. It was because when the, all the benchmarks came out, when they were measuring dynamic range, yeah. 750 and 700 were so close in dynamic range. So if you, let's say, were landscape photography, yeah. it was really a hard choice. Yes, 750 was better in low light, but if you were an architect or let's say landscape photographer, Definitely 7200 was almost on par. It was great and you yeah. could use it for um, sort of also event work and concerts and low light. I used one as a second body for a shoot alongside the D750 and the use between those two was kind of, it was almost like picking up the same camera because they were so similar. The only difference really was that obviously one was DX and one was FX. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought those worked quite nicely in partnership Absolutely. with each other. Um, Colin asks if Bill, Bill, can I also have a coffee? <laughs> Coffee's all around, Colin. Coffee's on today, yeah. <laughs> So then we had, now I ran out of room on my piece of paper. So 2016, we saw the release of the D3400 mm -hmm. and the D5600. 
We were, the numbers got so confusing. No, the That's 5600 true. was 2017, wasn't it? If you've got it on screen there, bigger, can you move it? Where's the 5600? 20... 17. No, it's 16, like... end of 2016. So right there. So I knew that they came out at around a similar time. So 5600 has been around for quite some time. Yeah, it's been around for about three, nearly, nearly four years now, which is really... It's so strange. Oh my goodness, Richard, yes. Do you remember the, the crimson coloured D3300? Oh, yes. Yeah, we had these um, kind of like hot red D3300s. They also did it... Golden bronze. They did a bronze... 5000 series. 5300 or something. And they did a... Garish. They did like a gunmetal grey. But the problem was that the finish was even more plasticky than... You know, these are obviously... They're, they're made of plastic. They are. There's no denying yeah. it. But they were shiny plastic. Can I mention ugly as Your well? Your thing's going to fall over. No. I don't know if you're allowed to say that. I, my mum, bless her, when she I was mean, working here, she okay, let's say called it ugly to someone's point, face. <laughs> <laughs> let's say for ugly quiet camera. taste. Yes. A quiet taste. I mean, he, I have a gold affair, so the bronze <laughs> D5200 would go really <laughs> well with it. It it really nicely. Yeah. Um, I think that it made sense for, you know, you know, I, I don't really want to say it's just for young people that want a different colour camera, but like, I like an iPhone that's not black, right? I like mm -hmm. a gold or a silver phone. Let so it's like your own individualism. Yes. I can kind of understand what they were doing. Choice there. is good. But at the same time, it didn't look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. There were a lot of people that had. You remember the the Nikon One system? They had that hot pink. Was it oh, yes. J One? I remember or, or that. S, S1. I just looked at it and I pretended that <laughs> I never amazing. saw it. Amazing. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, we do remember that, Richard. Thank you for that little trip down memory lane there. And thank you, Barra, for your contribution to the Christmas stocking coffee fund. That's very, thank very much so appreciated. Much. We are going to be so hyper today. No sleep for us tonight. With the coffee. Party. <laughs> Sorry. So 3,400, 5,600. 3,400 was very, again, very quickly replaced. Yes. By the 3500. And again, they were kind of on the yearly release there. Yes. And and that brings us up to the current range of um, of bodies. So now we have the entry level 3500, mm -hmm. which here's my here's my grind my gear. Yes. Right. The 3400 was able to use a remote release. So MCDC2. Okay. It was able to take a headphone jack if you wanted to shoot video and you wanted to plug in a mic, an external mic or headphones to to mm -hmm. listen. 3400 stripped all of that out of it. So it doesn't have any of that. You can't use a cable release. The, your solution to both the cable release um, and uh, actually there's no solution to the mic jack thing at all. No. Because you can't even you, use you a can't, Bluetooth mic. You can't just do a snap bridge. You can't do a snap bridge and use a microphone. Phone. No, you no, can't. Okay. But the snap bridge app is the solution to remotely triggering it. So that really got on my nerves. Yeah, I agree. Um, Absolutely. You have to go, but apart from that, it's actually a great little entry level camera. The D50, what are we on? 5600? 50, 56. Yep. Yeah, is next step up. Same sensor. Same pretty much everything else, but it has the flip out touch screen. Feels nice. Has it, it feels nice. So it has the touch screen, flip out touch screen, and um, you, you've got the headphone jack and you can use a cable release. I know it sounds like really stupid, and actually petty. A camera thing. that you can use. <laughs> I sound um, really petty when I say I get upset no, about it. For, for, let's say for um, enthusiasts yeah. that who are just getting into photography yeah. and not knowing that they may need this feature, especially yeah. nowadays where everyone can stream on YouTube, yes. you know some people like us like us you know um <laughs> not having this feature is actually uh you know it, it's quite important for some it, people i know it it's is. not for everyone and yes if you're a stills photographer maybe you never get into the videos but because it all comes um as a part of the package it's nice to have this little um 3.5 jack you know yeah exactly and i mean it's not the end of the world. You ha you can get around it if you're using. Yeah, you can just buy another camera. You, know. stream. you could buy another camera. It, to get around it, you'd have to feed your audio through an external device and then match them up afterwards. I mean, that's just yeah. a pain, right? That's not just well, maybe. Um, annoyed by it's it. easy nowadays because a software like Pluto Rise or let's say if you're using uh, on Apple with the FX, whatever the video editing they have, yeah, it's all done automatically. I think Adobe allows for that as well. Yeah, uh, if you do a clap, that helps you sync your audio as well. Ah. Ah, okay, so there's a tip for the 3500 users um, if you do need that. Um, yeah, you can get around it, but it's not that easy and straightforward as having, let's say, 3.5 jack in your camera built in. That's right. Um, Roy, it's the ML L3. There's an extra L in there for yeah. that one. The ML, ML3 is a different beast. It's a completely different beast, about 250 pounds, and uh, is an infrared thing. And if you add an extra L, it becomes that little 
remote that you can use. And it becomes cheaper as well. Yeah, so the D D3400 takes this little sort of £20 uh, infrared remote release. Yes. D3500 doesn't work. So if you're looking for um, an entry-level camera and you can find a second-hand D3400, I would go for that. Um, D3500 is great if you don't need those extra mm -hmm. things. Um, and it's much smaller and lighter, actually, than the D3400. It is mm. the lightest DSLR they make. Then we've got the 5600, yes. which is flat bang in the middle. Yes. Then we've Before got... Before you move on, no? I just want to mention one thing that yep. I don't like about this camera. <laughs> As we're on the subject. So, a normal camera. Yeah, normal camera. Like a professional. <laughs> uh, no. Um, what I like about Nikon cameras is you've got front and back dial. So, yes. uh, main command and sub command dial, as yes, you can call. Yes, very true. Uh, this is nice. This is just nice to it's have. It's nice to have both both wheels, yeah. Because yeah. you can control your aperture and you can control your dial, um, shutter speed via different dials. Mm -hmm. On cameras like 3000, 5000 series, unfortunately, you have only one dial and it's in the back. Yes. So if you use manual mode and you need to control both of them, is normally the back controls the shutter speed and then you have to press a button. Yeah. And hold the button. I think it was um, one it's of exposure those. Compensation. It's exposure compensation. So mode, you yeah. lose exposure compensation, exactly. which you don't need in manual mode anyway. Exactly. But it's silly. Yeah, and when you hold it pressed and then uh, turn the dial, then it will change the aperture. So coming from the bigger cameras, mm. it becomes a little bit difficult to adjust. But if you never had, let's say, you know, something like D seven thousand series cameras, then you never miss that. No, so exactly. If you're kind of my right that's, yeah. that's fair enough because. Everything on these smaller bodies is quite menu-centric, Yes. whereas as soon as you get to the 7000 series, you start looking at, you can push a button and twiddle the dial and change yes. a setting without ever having to touch the menu. So um, that for sure is, is, a, yeah. is a nice addition to the 7000 series. Now, can I move on? Can I move on to the 7500? Yes, you can. <laughs> so the 7500, we've done a live stream on the subject of these DX, like the D500, 7500, yes. what's the difference sort of thing. 7500, Replaced, not immediately, they ran them side by side, but eventually mm. replaced the 7200. It is basically like a D D500 sensor in a smaller body. It doesn't take a battery grip, so sad for the so there's some, battery grip. There's some good things about it, and there's some bad things about yeah. it. Yeah, it's got the same autofocus system as the D7200. Yes. But it was supposedly a little bit faster, yeah. better in low light. That's true. Um, but only a single memory card slot. Single SD card slot. Instead of a dual one. Yeah. Um, and, and that was a very strange decision. It was really bizarre. So there's yeah. a few things that I don't understand about this camera. But, and it, they took out non-CPU lens data. That's true. Again, um, if you look at the manual focus uh, with Nikon DSLR videos. Yeah. Uh, all 7000 series cameras support it except D7500. I don't understand that. Me neither. I just don't. So the 7500 is a bit of a confusing one. At the, at the moment, it's still the cheapest DSLR that shoots 4K video. So if you need 4K video, if you're not worried about the battery grip or the single card slot, um, and you don't have manual focus lenses, or you don't mind not having the exit data of, of manual focus lenses, then um, then it's it's a very cheap way of buying a D500, basically. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you need that extra stuff, you do have yeah. to start going up to the D500. That's true. Um, so the D7500 came out in 2017, mm -hmm. I have as my note, which was just after the D500. And yeah. actually, that was the last DX camera we've seen now until the Z50. Until next year. Until next, well, we, maybe. We don't know anything. Don't quote him. <laughs> you can't say stuff like that. <laughs> um, I think it is safe to say that we'll see something next year. We will see something next year. I don't know what it is, yeah. but I think that the it's interesting how that 20 okay. megapixel sensor... Hold on, let me just say this. I predict <laughs> that Nikon will release new products in 2021. Oh, okay, you can say that. Yes. Yeah, you're allowed to say that. Okay. Um, Sorry, yes. I, we know that they're going to bring out new products. We don't know if it's going to be DX. But I, I speculate. Can I speculate? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now that we're, we're doing that. Yeah, let's do um, that. <laughs> let's speculate. I think that they're going to bring out an entry-level mirrorless camera. I think so, too. I think that the Z50 has kind of replaced out the 5600 and 7500 in the mirrorless. Mm -hmm. So I think we need something entry point, like under 500 pounds. Budget. I agree. Although the Z50 is an exceptional price right now, but at the same time, yeah. it's still higher class than it. I agree. Needs to and be. the thing about this, again, we're coming from that where they release a new product and it's quite expensive. Yeah. And then they start to produce more of them and they start to make the technology cheaper. cheaper. Right. So they go from the top to the bottom. So Z50 now 
has been out for quite some time. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that there's going to be something in be in the range below it. Yes. It's been like, out for a year. Exactly. And I'm... then my question is, so if Z50 is so tiny, mm. how tiny the Z30 will be? I don't think that they'll make it smaller. I want to. You want a tiny one. You want to take yeah. this. Do you remember yeah. that tiny little, I think it was called an S1 or something? Oh, yes. It was, it was, min it was basically a screen yeah. like that. My and the button on finger it. would cover the whole camera. Yeah, basically, it's amazing. At this point. Yeah. It's like a spy camera. Yeah. So the uh, that's my prediction is that there will be a Z. I agree. Let's call it a Z30. It's a good name. Yes. Good name for it. Um, whether or not they replace out the three thousand five hundred, five thousand six hundred, and seven thousand five hundred, I don't know. They've been out for a couple of years now, but. Yes. So again, it could be a, a mirrorless release. Yeah. Or it could be a DSLR release. Yes. So it depends on how far they advance the mirrorless technology. Yeah. But I think it's safe to say that they will be replaced at some point. Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. phased out and something else will come their way. But it's still, as a ca in terms of manufacturing a camera, they're still kind of the most popular. So yes. it makes sense. And so now we've got a 20 megapixel sensor in the D7500, mm -hmm. 24 megapixels in the 56 and the 35. 500, my goodness me. I think, I think we've reached the end of the stream. <laughs> when I can't talk anymore. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and that is and that is the the small entry-level DSLRs yes, for small you. Small but mighty. Small but mighty. And yes, we didn't just cover entry levels. Obviously, I realized that there were a few people griping about the fact that we called it entry-level and that we're talking about non-entry-level cameras. Yeah. There's so many uh, different levels and yeah. uh, some of them are quite mixed because some of the things we can call entry level, but they also could be in the same with professionals. Yeah. But then they don't fit the professional level. No. So technically we try to keep it in a kind of a trilogy of things. That's right. Um, but we could potentially split it into, let's say, four quarters as well. Oh my yeah. goodness, yeah. yeah. But um, but I think that, that we pretty, because the technology was very similar, Yeah. It was okay for us to bunch it together. So we went from prosumer to advanced entry level to entry level. Those exactly. kind of three categories. Thank you everyone for bearing with us there Thank while we got so through much. that. We made it. Woo! Right. Um, so yeah. now we are going to, we've, we've just thrown in those last few names. Yeah. Um, you're going to do the honors this week. Okay. Me. So much pressure. Yeah. Uh, I have to swirl it around so, so that it's really well mixed up. Okay. All right. You ready? Yes. <laughs> Right, let's see if my name is in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. And the winner is John Hughes. Oh, John. Well yay. Done. Well done, John. <laughs> so you are the winner of this. I will clean it up for you because I picked it up and put it otherwise. But this lovely piece of ED glass, which you may use for whatever purpose you wish. Um, but I think it's supposed to be a paperweight, as far as I know. But that is going to be winging its way to you this week. Very well done. Thank you to everybody who put their name in the, um, in the bag. Yeah. For I us. like to win it because it's shiny. It is shiny. Yeah. It's very shiny. Get a piece of Nikon Sports Optics there. Mm. Um, and yes, you're very welcome. Thank you, everyone who joined us, who contributed to the Christmas coffee fund. That Thank was incredible. So we are going to have a um, coffee now. <laughs> it is very needed. We will see you for our two streams till Christmas stream. Two streams. Next week. It's exciting. Wow, um, and I know it does, really, and particularly when you measure it in streams. And uh, we will be doing our podcast next week as well, which um, is going to become a hopefully regular thing, Nikon, the Nikon yeah. Report. Three hours of no. uh, D850 <laughs> update for CF Express, <laughs> three, three hour hours. discussion. Uh, we try and keep it short to about a half an hour so that it's something you can listen to on the way to work or in the car or whatever. Um, and we will see you between now and then. Yeah, absolutely. Well, excellent. But, uh, what uh, were you pointing uh, at the uh, oh something else for your wife to carry no <laughs> don't make her carry this one use it as a paperweight keep your paper down <laughs> all right thank you very much everyone have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week and we'll see you next week thank you so much thank you bye, bye.